Welcome to Muse Art Consultancy Homeschool Art Sessions. This week I'm going to be teaching you how to do a simple observational drawing of a flower. And the first thing that you need to find is a flower that you would like to do a drawing of. Maybe in your garden, on one of your walks, or failing that, you can look on the internet for some interesting pictures that you'd like to work from. Now, what I would like you to consider when finding a flower to work from is try and find something that has lots of variety in it. Variety of size and shape, variety of tone and detail. The more variety the subject has that you're working from, the easier it is to make it look realistic and the easier it is to get a good outcome from it. So try to avoid choosing a simple flower because you think it will be easier to draw because actually it might be more difficult. Now I've chosen this flower because it has lovely small buds at the top, moving into medium semi-open buds in the middle to lovely big flowers at the bottom with lots of detail and lots of opportunity for me to add tone to later on when we start our drawing. Now if you're taking a photo, have a white piece of paper with you and if you put that just behind the flower that you're taking a photo of, it blanks out the background so you can really see the shapes that you're going to be drawing from, you can see the flower much easier. The next thing that you will need are some pencils. This is a set of pencils that I use when I'm doing drawing because it has a really good variety of softer pencils and harder pencils. And the harder pencils would be the number with the H afterwards and the softer pencils would be the number with the B afterwards. The higher the number with the B, the softer the pencil and the higher the number with the H, the harder the pencil. Soft pencils are fantastic for adding lovely deep dark tones and harder pencils are really good for initial sketches and outlines for you to map down what your drawing is going to be. Now when you start your drawings you are going to be using an HB pencil so if you can make sure you have an HB pencil and a soft pencil that would be brilliant. The next thing that we're going to do is get hold of some brown paper. Now brown paper is brilliant for doing drawings on because you can not only just add your dark tones, you also have the opportunity to add your highlights and for them to really stand out against the background. So if you want to try working on brown paper, this is a great opportunity for you to do so. You can use brown paper from an envelope, brown paper from the internet if you want to buy a brown sketchbook, or you can even put a tea or coffee wash onto a normal white piece of paper, wait for it to dry, and then use that to work from. As long as the paper is a slightly off white, that is perfect. Now before you stick your paper in, try and make sure you don't have any straight edges because a rectangle on your page is a little bit boring we want to make it look a little bit more interesting and more organic than that so try and rip the edges slightly create a bit of an interesting shape an interesting oval that you'll be working on and the next thing you're going to think about is where you're going to stick this piece of paper on your page so far as building a composition now once you've stuck your piece of paper down and you're ready to start drawing, I want you to find your HB pencil. And an HB pencil is perfect for doing an initial outline with because it's not too soft and it's not too hard. It's just the just right for doing an outline drawing with. Always make sure it's nice and sharp so you can get your details in. Now when you start your drawing, you're not just going to be drawing in the middle of the piece of paper, I'd like you to draw some of the details coming off, either the top or the bottom or the sides. As you can see on my drawing here, I've actually drawn my flower going right the way across my brown piece of paper with the main details on the brown paper itself, but a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom, just to make it look a little bit more interesting on my page. Now when you've done your outlines with your HB pencil, super sharp HB pencil, You'll be looking at all of the shapes of the leaves, of the flowers, of the stem. And once you're happy with that, you can then start adding your mid-tones, your mid-tone with your shading. Now, a mid-tone isn't the darkest tones and it's not the lightest tones. It's the tones that you can see that are in the middle and the tone that will usually blanket most of your flower. Now, if this video is going too fast for you at all, please do pause it, catch up and then press play again to continue with the next stages. Now when you're shading, you use your pencil in a slightly different way to when you're doing your outlines. When you're doing your outlines, you'd be holding your pencil the way that you would be when you're doing writing. And when you're shading, you're holding your pencil on the side so you can get the most out of the coverage of the tip. You get it, there's a larger surface area when your pencil's held sideways. So when you're adding your shading, you're holding your pencil quite flat to the page so you can get the most surface area 
from the nib like we just discussed and you're not pressing really 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 hard you're pressing hard enough so you can see that's where the shadows are going to be but not so hard that it's really hurting your hand and you're really pushing down because the harder you press with the pencil the deeper the tones will be and the harder it will be to rub it out if you make a mistake now when you're shading as well I want you to try and cover up the lines the pencil makes so don't try and do really big lines really big zigzags try and use your pencil in quite small little shapes to create quite smooth shading that's how you make shading look successful now as you can see now by looking at my flower in comparison to the flower photo that I've taken I've added all of my midtones and I can see where all of my shapes are going to be and all my shapes are but there's still something missing I'm now going to start thinking about going in with a white pencil to add highlights before I add the finer details now I don't think you can see the sign on this pencil but it's called a polychromos and um, these pencils are absolutely fantastic the white is really bold and it stands out really well on a page some white pencils don't stand out as well as these ones so I'd really suggest if you really do enjoy drawing getting one of these pencils you can order the white separately you can buy them separately um, and but they're fan absolutely fantastic to use now, when you're using your white pencil, you, you have to use it a few times to kind of warm up the nib and then you'll start to see the really, um, the boldness of the white pencil come out. And what we do with drawing is quite often, not only do we use a white pencil for adding highlights and the lighter areas, which I'm doing now, we actually use it for a technique called burnishing. And burnishing is when you use a white pencil, which I'm doing on this part of the flower now, over an already shaded part or already um, coloured in part if you're using colouring pencils for a drawing or anything like that and it creates a much smoother tone over the, the pencil. It almost blends the pencil together. So now my flower has got my mid-tones. I've added my white tones with my pencil. I'm now going to go back in again with my 5B pencil, my really soft pencil, and really try and darken some of the areas, especially in the opening of the flowers that I can see in here. And when you're doing observational drawing, obviously you have to keep looking at what you're drawing from. In fact, you probably have to look at what you're drawing from more sometimes than what you're actually looking at your own drawing just to make sure that you're being accurate with where the tones are that you're placing, where the details are that you're placing, and try and copy it as accurately as you can. When you're doing drawing or anything from observation, you almost have to forget what you can see, forget what you think something looks like, and really try and focus on what it actually looks like. So I'm starting to press a little bit harder now on some of the darker areas of my flower. I'm going to start going in in a moment with all the smaller details the little um, patterns almost that you can see on the inside of the flowers themselves so my pencil is really sharp to create a darker tone you do have to press a little bit harder than what you would when you're adding your mid tones because the harder you press the darker the pencil will come out and if you're unsure how a pencil will look you can always practice in the back of your sketchbook or have a page dedicated purely for practicing different tones and what happens when you press hard with the nib when you press hard with the side of your pencil now when I'm adding the finer details that's when the drawing really starts to come to life and it starts to look more like what it is that I'm trying to draw from do notice how my drawing has come off of the brown paper, like I said at the beginning, and it goes off of the, the top of the paper as well. Just filling the page a little bit more rather than just having my flower stuck in the middle of the brown paper. You can keep layering, you can keep adding darker tones if you want to, you can go over with your white pencil a bit more too, until you're happy with how your drawing looks sitting on your page. This is my finished piece. I'm really happy with it and I look forward to seeing what you've come up with as well. Please do share your videos with me or pictures of your work. It would be great to see them. Thank you for coming along and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye bye.